we are given here a circle of diameter 10 and the regular pentagon touching pentagram touching its circumference is inscribed. What is the area of the part not covered by the star? So, ito yung magiging drawing natin for this problem and um, usually sa board problems, hindi siya binibigay yung drawing. So, ikaw ang magdodraw sa kanya. So, binigyan tayo ngayon ng diameter which is equal to 10 meters. Na diameter yan ang buong bilog na to. And yung pentagram natin, that is a regular 5-pointed star. Inscribed daw siya in a circle, therefore, yung mga vertices ng star na to, ayan, nagtatouch siya mismo sa circumference ng circle for it to be fully inscribed. Now, what is being asked here is, ano daw yung magiging area ng portion na nasa loob ng circle, but nasa labas ng star, not covered by the star. So basically, ito yung mga sinishade kong region dyan. So that, when we look at our figure, we can say that the area of the shaded portion is equal to the area of the circle minus the area of the star. And I know that a lot of you could agree na ganun nga yung mangyayari. Okay, so first and for all, we need to compute for the area of the circle. That's very easy because we have already have our diameter as our given. So area ng ating circle would be pi over 4 times d squared. So that would be pi over 4 times diameter natin is 10 squared. And that would give us 25 pi. Okay. Now, how about the area of the star? So, how are we going to compute for the area of the star? O, gagamitin natin ngayon dito yung theorems on circles natin. Alright. So, what theorems are we going to use? Ayan. So, tama bang sabihin na when we want to get the area of the star, pwede natin siyang hati-hatiin siguro into, let's say, 5 equal portions. Ayan. Tiin ko siyang ganito. Okay, so that yung each drawing na nakikita nyo dyan, draw ko siya dito separately. May nakikita kayong broken lines, tapos another broken line here, and then itong portion na to, ayan, idodraw ko sa inyo pati yan. So this would be may ganito, tapos ganyan. And ganyan. So, I hope you are getting that one. And is it right to say na yung area ng star natin would be equal to 10 times the area of a certain triangle? Ano yung tri triangle na yan? No. Itong isang triangle na to, pag nakuha natin yung area niya, tapos ita times 10 ko siya, makukuha ko ba yung area ng star? Tama yun, di ba? Kasi, o, oh, ayan o. Oh, isang ganito, ayan, ito yung partner niya. Ito yung ikalawa, yan, and then ikatlo dyan, ikaapat dito, tapos, yan, tigadalawa siya, no, dalawa dyan, dalawa dyan, dalawa dito, dalawa dito, dalawa dyan, and that makes it 10 smaller triangles. And if we can get the area of that smaller triangle, then tapos na yung magiging problem natin. But the question is, paano natin kukunin ang area ng triangles na yan? Ano, y ano ba yung binigay sa atin as part of the given, no? Uh, take note dito, mayroong binigay na diameter. And tama bang sabihin na itong broken line na to, yan, ito ba ay ang radius natin, which is equal to 5 meters, half of the diameter? Tama ba yun? Tama yun, di ba? Kasi, if you draw a line from the center of the circle, going to each circumference, that defines the radius. And ito yung part, yan. Okay? So, given na radius yan, ano pa yung iba natin kailangan ngayon ng mga um, angle siguro. Okay? So, sa division natin kanina na lima, di ba meron tayong lima na side, limang ganitong itsura. Limang ganito, no? And pwede ko bang kunin itong angle na to? That angle is actually your theta sub C. That is your central angle. Now, sa drawing natin na yan, meron tayong limang divisions that would give us theta sub c. One is this one. Then we have this. We have that. Tapos ito. And then lastly, ito. Okay? So, simply saying, makukompute pala natin si theta sub c by 
getting the whole circle angle 360 degrees, i-divide natin siya ngayon by 5. Kasi nga, 5 divisions ang meron tayo. So, I hope nakakapalo kayo doon. And that would mean na 72 degrees ang ating theta sub C. Itong kabuuan nito would be 72 degrees. Sulat ko yun. Ayan. Now, let me draw yung isang part lang ng ating triangle na yan. Ay, ang, ang ating parang ano na yan, no? Naka-V na yan. Kasi ito yung triangle na pinag-uusapan natin. This is the area of the triangle that we should be getting. Again, this is 5 meters. And if this entire thing is 72 degrees, pwede kong masasabi na or pwede kong sabihin na itong angle na to would be 36 degrees. That's half of 72. Very logical na sabihin yun. Now, another thing na kailangan natin kunin dito is isa pang angle. Itong angle na to. What would be this angle? Ito yan. Okay? And in getting that angle, dun papasok ngayon ang ating theorems on circles. Okay? Remember na itong angle na to, no? di ba magkakapareho lang naman to sila? Let's say, ito yung pinag-uusapan nating angle. Ayan. Itong angle na to is kalahati lang. Ito yon, ito. Ayan. Pero, una nating makocompute actually is yung buo. So, considering itong buo, ayan. Di ba ito yung tinatawag natin na intercepted angle? So, you need to consider kung ano yung ini-intercept niyang arc. So, looking at this, ito yung ini-intercept ng angle na to. Ayan, this is your A, and let's say this is your B. So, idodraw ko siya ngayon to make it more familiar sa inyo sa ating mga theorems on circles kanina. Okay? Do you recall this one? This is your A, B na R. O, lagay ko ngayon, lagay ko ito si angle beta. Angle beta. Yung hinahanap natin dito is equal to beta over 2 yan. Kalahati. Okay? And di ba, considering this one, di ba ito yung theta sub C natin? Theta sub C yan, which is 72 degrees. And by principle ng theorems on circles natin, si angle beta daw is always one half of theta sub C. So basically, we can get angle beta as one half of 72 degrees na nauna natin na compute kanina dito. And that would give us 36 degrees. Okay? I hope maintindihan nyo yun. Central angle na nag intercept ng parehong arc, kalahati ng value na yun would be equal to the intercepted angle na nag intercept ng parehong arc pa rin. Alright. So, if that is 36 degrees, then beta over 2 is 18 degrees. Pwede natin sabihin gano'n. So, kung 18 degrees yan, ano meron tayo? Meron tayong dalawang angle and isang included na side. And for us to get the area of uh, the area of this triangle, at least meron tayong dalawang side dapat. Tama? Okay, so basically, gagamitin natin si sine law. But before we proceed, kunin muna natin ano yung magiging value ng angle na to. Okay. Paano makukuha yung angle na yan? 180 degrees, the sum of total um, interior angle ng triangle, minus 18, minus 36, that would be 126 degrees. So, what do we have here is, pwede tayong mag-sign law, no? so that yung radius natin na 5 over the sign of the angle na kaharap niya, that's 126 degrees, okay? That should give you letter A. Set ko dito A ito. Side A over the sine of angle na kaharap niya. And that is sine of 18 degrees. So, that would give us a value of A na ilan yan? A is equal to 1.94. 1. Medyo nalito kayo doon or nabilisan kayo, you can repeat. The video, okay? So that's 1.91, and therefore we can now get the area of the star. 
Okay, that is 10 times the area of the triangle. How do we get the area of the triangle? That's one half isang side. That's 1.91. AB sine theta tayo, di ba? Times R. And then sine of the included angle. 36 degrees. Okay, let me put this way na lang. Ayan na, kasi nag kasi pa na tayo. So that the area of the star would be ilan to? Times 5 times sine 36 times 0.5 times 10. That would be 28.06 square meters. Yan ngayon ang area ng ating star. But what is being asked is the area not covered by the star. So that is area shaded that would be how much? 25 pi minus the area of the star, 28.06. So, our final answer would be 50.48. 50.48 square meters. Ito ngayon ang magiging final answer natin for that problem. Okay, so we have our next problem here. A deltoid with side lengths 10 units and 20 units is inscribed into a circle. Determine the ratio of the shorter to the greater diagonal. So ayan, pasensya na kayo sa medyo uh, maiingay natin na background. Dito lang ako sa bahay namin ngayon and medyo nahihirapan ako mag-record. But I still hope that you appreciate your lessons sa amateur stage tayo ng recording. Ayan. So, sinabi sa problem natin is meron tayong deltoid. And this may be an unfamiliar shape sa inyo, but this is a kite-like shape. No, alam niyo yung kite, di ba? Ganyan yung itsura ng ating kite. So, that's a deltoid. Ngayon, i-inscribe natin siya sa ating bilog. Ayan. Tapos, meron doon tayong 10 units na side and 20 units na side. So basically, ito yung magiging 10 units, the shorter side, and another 10 units here, and this would be 20 units, and another 20 units here. And ang tinatanong sa atin, ano daw ang ratio ng ating greater diagonal to the shorter diagonal? So that is DL over DS. Saan ba yung diagonals? By definition, diagonals ang tawag sa lines na nagko-connect sa dalawang non-adjacent vertices. Hindi magkakatabing vertex. Okay? Special property ng ganitong type of figure is 90 degrees ito dito. And, if meron tayong deltoid, yung pinaka mahaba or the longer diagonal niya, ito is equal yan sa diameter of the circle. Okay? Kasi parang nami-mirror lang naman niya, di ba? One side na to is equal to the other side. Therefore, for this to be the longer diagonal, dapat nandun siya mismo sa, um, naglalay siya mismo sa diameter ng ating circle. And if that's the diameter of the circle, alam natin by principle that this should be 90 degrees. Tama? From our theorems din yan, you know? Um, from our Thales theorem ang tawag natin dyan. Okay? So, paano din ba naging 90 degrees yan? Kasi kung iisipin natin, principle pa rin ng central angle, no? given na ito yung diameter, ito is 180 degrees. Therefore, if itong diameter na to, itong angle na to, which is a straight angle, nag-intercept siya ng dalawang arc, say arc, ah, na isang arc, say arc AB, Tapos, ito is magiging intercepted angle na siya. I-intercept din niya yung parehong arc na yan, arc AB. Therefore, kalahati dapat siya ng center angle na kina 180 degrees. So, yun yung pinagalingan ng, um, one, ah, ng 90 degrees natin dito sa dalawang sides. Yan. So, basically, mabilis kumpitin ano yung magiging longer diagonal. Kasi you can get that by your um, Pythagorean theorem lang. So, that your dl squared is equal to um, 
20 squared plus 10 squared. Tama ba ako dun? Okay. So, that would be how much? 20 squared plus 10 squared would give us 500. So, that our DL is equal to the square root of 500. And that would be, how much is that? Square root of 500 is 10 square root of 5. Okay, so 10 square root of 5. Now, how are we going to get our DS? Okay, ito yung DS natin. Lagay ko dito sa kabilang side. DS over 2. Ito naman, DS over 2. So, kung idodraw ko yan ngayon, pwede natin siyang makuha dahil meron tayong ganitong drawing. No? Remember, 90 degrees yung um, intersection ng ating dalawang diagonals. So, that this one is DS over 2. And this one would be 10 units. Okay? Mabilis siyang kunin if we know this angle here. Let's say this angle is angle theta. And how do we get angle theta? No? We can consider getting angle theta by checking the bigger triangle. Ito si angle theta kasi natin. Okay? So what do we have? Meron ka ditong, ano to? Um... This is your adjacent and this is your opposite. Tama? Adjacent and this is your opposite. So we can get angle theta by getting the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite, which is 20, divided by the adjacent. So katoa tayo, di ba? Tangent is toa. Opposite over adjacent. So this would be angle theta natin would then be 63.43 degrees. Okay? So, kung 63.43 degrees siya, pwede natin siyang compute na itong value ng ating DS over 2. So, that looking at the smaller triangle tayo, ayan, is a smaller triangle tayo. What we have here is the sign the sine of theta na 63.43 is equal to opposite, that sine na, ds over 2, divided by the hypotenuse 10 units. Kasi in the case of the smaller triangle, hypotenuse natin si 10 units. So that would give us ds is equal to 17.8 eight, nine units. So, in that case, we can get our final answer, dl over ds, that's 10 square root of 5, divided by ds, 17.889. That would give us 5 over 4, or 5 fourths or 1.25. 5 over 4 for 1.25. So, that's how we approach our deltoid problem na naka-inscribe sa circuit.